the gag reflex, uvula deviation and deviation of the tongue. Which way does the uvula deviate in the context of lesion and which way does the tongue deviate? Now there is of course a very simple way to remember this, I'll explain that right at the end of the memory aid. But to understand this, let's start with number 9 and number 10, cranial and number 9, glossopharyngeal. Remember 9 looks like a G, hence that's what number 9 is glossopharyngeal. And number 10 being your vagus, originating from the word vagrant, which means wanderer. Now, both of these, remember, uh, come out from the medulla oblongata. So 2244 four again, four brain midbrain pons medulla. In terms of uvular deviation and the gag reflex, so which way does what happens here? Now, I'm just going to explain that very briefly. So appreciate the uh, sensory aspect to the glossopharyngeal is such that it innovates the posterior aspect of the tongue, the posterior one third. It also uh, innovates the sensory innovation to the oropharynx, i.e. the soft palate. So when we actually touch that area with a tongue depressor, for example, when we stimulate those sensory receptors, we are going to send efferent fibres up to the medulla and that will initiate the gag reflex. So if that gag reflex is not initiated, so the patient doesn't sense that gag, that's a damage to glossopharyngeal nerve, okay? In terms of the gag, so let's say the sensation is there, but the gag is not actually uh, initiated. That's because it dam damaged the vagus nerve, because the actual vagus nerve innovates the musculature in and around this area, including the pharyngeal muscle. And the pharyngeal muscles, uh, as well as a couple of others, what they do is they actually innovate the musculature of the soft palate. So keep into the gag for a minute, the, the pharyngeal muscle is also associated with swallowing, so in the context of stroke, when a patient has difficulty swallowing, and we therefore recommend SALT assessment, what we're looking at is damage to cranial nerve number 10 because it's a muscular component, the afferent outflows. Keeping to that soft palate rise, now if we appreciate if there is damage to the cranial nerve number 10, then the soft palate will not rise when you initiate phonation. So when we say to the patient, open your mouth and say, ah, you'll notice that the soft palate rises when the phonation is activated. Let's recall that you've got two, uh, we've got two sets of cranial nerves, one on each side, and I'm going to show this in, 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 in the best way possible. So we initiate the cranial nerves, both of them are functioning, and so both parts of the soft palate rise, and the ivula actually rises directly above. If, however, let's say we have damage on this side, What's going to happen is when we phonate, both of them are going to go up like so, okay? Except my apologies, because there's damage to this side, this is not going to actually activate. So this is going to activate. Now, as this activates, you see the uvula, if you imagine that hanging over here, what's going to happen is it's going to deviate, okay? So it's going to do that, and it's going to pull in that direction. And that is uvula deviation. Now notice the uvula is deviating away from the side of lesion because the muscle is not working on this side so it can't equally rise. Let's now go on to the tongue deviation. The tongue uh, is innervated, it's of musculature innervated by the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve number 12, again originating from the medulla oblongata. Again, if you imagine the tongue as, as one piece, I'm going to use this as a, as a, as a kind of my tongue, and we've got innervation on the right hand side and we've got innervation on the left hand side. I'm going to keep the lesion on the same side as I did earlier, okay, just so that we understand it. Now, because the innervation is equal on both sides and there's no damage, as I protrude my tongue, as I push it out, both of these muscle sets of muscles are activated and so equally, and so we push out, so bring your hands together, push them together, and I want you to push out like so, and you'll notice it comes out straight. However, if I have lesion on this side, what's going to happen is when I, when I push, so now let's just make this hand a bit weaker. So when I push, notice my hand is, is actually, this is stronger because it's fully innovated. This is not working at all. So therefore it's pushing in that direction. So I've got deviation. And which side is it deviating? Towards the side of lesion, okay? And that's your explanation for ovular, well, you've got gag reflex, you've got ovular deviation, and you've got the tongue deviation. And as I said on the outset, I promised I'll give you a memory aid for this. 
Remember, T for tongue, T for towards the side of lesion, i.e. ipsilateral, as compared to the uvula, which is the opposite side, so it is deviating away from the side of lesion, i.e. contralateral to the lesion, and that is the way to remember that, T for tongue, T for, t for towards. Thank you for watching.